What's up everybody? Dan Strong here with Excel VBA is fun. Today is the lesson that you have been waiting for. We're going to finally show you how to take the information from a grid cell and actually put that into a cell inside a worksheet or a database in the background. So stick around. We're going to show you how to do it. If you want all the free files and all the free lectures that come with the grids crash course, click on the link above my head or in the video description. Let's get to it. All right, this is sort of the moment we've all been waiting for. We're now going to be able to take any of the edits that we do to the grid and send it back intuitively to the correct place in the Excel worksheet. So essentially, we have a way of editing and yet restricting certain items if we don't want certain columns to be editable or if we don't want people to manipulate certain things or whatever, we can control that using the grid control and we can still feed certain calculations or information back to Excel. So let's go ahead and try that out. We're going to still utilize this grid one change event for now and in order to do that stuff. So we're going to comment out the debug.print. We're going to comment that out and we're going to do it a different way now. The only thing that we really need is we need to know what row in Excel that we're dealing with. And of course, we need to know what column we're dealing with. But right now, we have a one to one ratio. We, whatever column number this is in the grid, just happens to be exactly aligned to whatever column number it is in Excel because this is a zero base and Excel is a one base but we have something smushed into the zero which is the row number anyway let's go ahead and try this and it'll make better sense so first of all we're gonna say the Excel row variable just like we did H as a variable or something but the Excel row is going to be equal to and we're gonna say sheet 2 dot grid one dot items dot cell value there's that cell value method again and we're going to use the item which comes from the event they feed us the row that we just changed automatically and we're also going to need to know what column that we're going to use in this case we're going to use column zero just like we did a moment ago that's going to give us the row number because it's always tucked away and hidden in column zero all right, so there's going to be the row number in Excel. The next thing we need to do is actually go ahead and take sheet three, where the data is, the sample data sheet, and we're actually going to just feed that information to that exact row and column. So sheet three dot cells, and in this case, what row do we need? Yeah, we just trapped it in a variable and named it Excel row. So let's type Excel row. That's what we need, that row, comma, and what column do we need? Well, it depends. It actually is the exact same column index as the column index variable. So call index would actually work right now since we happen to have the exact same column numbers. So that is going to be equal to, uh, now we could utilize the grid one using the cell value using item and call index but why would we because we already have a variable that gives the new value new value so let's just utilize that new value it already knows the row and the column that we need now let's go ahead and try this out really quick let's change let's say we're going to change the word Daniel to the word Tim and I'm going to hit enter I know that's uh, quite a stretch and uh, but we need to just see if it worked so if we go over here looky there we instead of Daniel strong or Dan strong it says Tim strong all right so let's go back here let's uh, let's make sure we know what's happening if you click on this little area right here the gray area and create a red dot that creates a manual breakpoint and that means it's gonna pause right there and allow us to hit F8 to step through as slowly as we feel like it let's do that now so I'm gonna change this back to Dan and hit enter and so it's going to feed us the Excel row we know that's working it's row 2 is what it's giving us so row 2 and then the cells object for sheet 3 says that row 2 and that particular column column A or 1 is now going to need to be the word Dan you hover over once I hit F8 you see that Tim is now Dan on that sheet and then we can go double check it and once again yes we have changed that now uh, you can try that on all the other columns if you'd like why don't we try doing this one and I'm gonna say plus 100 and hit enter so now the 287.5 should be what it says over here ah good it worked 
And then finally, of course, you're probably going to want to mess with the dates. So I would recommend that you experiment with all these to make sure they work. The date should now be 223. And looky there, the date is now 223. This is fantastic. So we now have a grid that's got all these cool editable features. And not only that, you might be worried, well, what if somebody scoots this column over and last name is now in column you know, zero 01. Last name is now in column 1. That's going to screw everything up, right, Dan? Well, interestingly enough, once the columns are established at the beginning, whenever we create the column order, they're actually going to hold that order. Even if we... Uh, jumble these around and move the bonus here and the last name here, it still is going to know that, uh, let's see, ooh, now I'm really confused, that zero and then this is column one and this is column two, column three and four, okay? It's still going to know that. So if I change the word strong to strong -y and hit enter, for example, it's automatically still going to keep Dan strong in that particular row. Even if we sort it, I know I've said this, but even if we sort by different things and we change a value, I'm going to say plus 600 should be 667, it's still going to be Cindy Lou Who 667, okay? So it just it just works beautifully and intuitively keeps those column items even if we reorder the columns and sort them. It's going to keep everything nice and neat for you. In the next lecture, we're going to show you how you can change things, meaning the background color or the for color, meaning the font color, of one of these cells. So let's say we wanted to mark a cell that we have changed so we could keep an eye on which ones that we've changed just for that session. We're going to change them red or blue or something, and we'll see you in the next lecture and show you how to do that.